Hello, everybody. I'm very happy to be here on the World AgriTech Summit. I want to thank you for having me here. It is an honor to be among such interesting names and presentations, so I'm flattered. Well, my name is Renato. I'm Barbara's father, Deborah's husband, and a Brazilian who spent many, many years working to survive on the supply chain environment. So I'm pretty much check at all the boxes on supply chain, logistics, procurement, manufacturing, you name it, both in Brazil and abroad. So you can imagine I had a lot of fun. So two years ago, I took a life changing decision. So I came back to Brazil and I joined a startup as CEO and partner. This is when technology became my thing. So I believe that being on the big corporation side for so much time helped me to understand why things that we are sure that should go faster get stuck along the way. So as I'm sad, I'm part of Treasy now, a technology company focused on bringing efficiency to the logistics ecosystem. So we develop solutions that goes from transport management to time scheduling tools. The most interesting part for me though is our app, which is a very consistent way of paving the way to bring the truck drivers to the digital world with simplicity, but using all the high-end tools that are available out there. We have a clear purpose. We want to leverage our technology to change the truck drivers' lives for better playing an important role of helping them to raise their game. It is a concept of democratizing technology in action. But I'm not here to talk about trees, so I really want to explore with you the concept of bringing more access to technology. Democratizing technology. So in my new journey as a mostly commercial guy now, it has been increasingly common while visiting clients to be invited to take a look at their respective control towers. So countless monitors arranged with all kinds of maps, information, a vision worthy of NASA. So, the room is always presented with great pride. Usually the host even highlights the size of the investment. However, I always prefer to pay more attention to people than to the screen. So I gotta say that most of the time I see people only using their own little screens, the cell phones. It's quite common to find screens out of date and eventually some of them are not even working. So it does not look like an infrastructure built for those who operate, but more like a sign on to the corporation that in technology is present. So if you do not have a control tower, you're out of the loop. So conversation goes around artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, as they are always the most demanded by our clients on those visits. So after exploring all those possibilities with these new technologies, sharing cases and trends, I always ask them to walk on the truck yard. By the end of the visit, it kind of became my habit. So most of the time though, it's not such a very sophisticated view. So confusing flows, truckers with papers in hand, trying to find and understand what to do, usually without a minimal infrastructure, such as simple Wi-Fi to compensate the weak 4G signal. So a visual, definitely not wolfing in, of, of NASA in that case. So William Gibson said in his frequently used quote, so the future is already here. It's not just very evenly distributed. So it is curious to see that that also happens within the same company. So corporate behavior tends to follow waves. It's not hard to find companies that develop their own apps, that have hubs to incubate startups of the most diverse trends, but at the same time, they are neglecting serious operation bottlenecks in their process. It's very common to hear from those on the front line that they are incapable of justified investments with their managements because the gains are not always direct and it's not the buzz of the moment or trendy, so it's very hard to capture their attention. The undeniable truth though, is that we all know that the truck that waits on your on your facility we will affect your costs. So even if the invoice does not come to you, or if you do not even believe that the, the, that that's your problem, so a truck and waiting problem is an emblematic example of that. So with all the technology out there, it is common for them to face waiting times higher than ten hours from the arrival to the completion of their process in Brazil. So in some more critical situations, it can even exceed twenty four hours. So that's not fair. And it's not acceptable anymore. I'm pretty sure we all agree on that. So the so-called digital transformation is not so far when we see it from a perspective of technolog technological innovation. So indeed, many tools are already developed, have the potential to transform the, the reality of the supply chain. And so imagine all the advantage of a single and integrated flow of documents supported by blockchain at the fingertip of millions of users. All of this is already there, ready to be used. Well, how far can we go individually if everything is organized in a chain? So if companies keep investing in logistics, thinking exclusively on themselves, we will have an unbalanced supply chain and that will always be a barrier to get to the next level. So op optimization is all about simplification and connection. So therefore, collaboration is key. 
for a digital transformation to happen, we have to go through a process of technology democratization. So if we find disparities within the same company, imagine how huge is the gap between different companies. So how to connect such a heterogeneous logistical chain where companies are unwilling and genuinely collaborating, especially when that includes competitors. I'll give you an example to try to illustrate what I'm saying. So can you even imagine how chaotic it will be to not have any standard cell phone SIM card? How hard it would be to the cell phone industry, telecom companies, and so on? How much money would be wasted in inventory? So the industry had to agree to comply to an end standard so they can focus on fighting for the best product and service. So users all over the globe benefit from it as well. So now let's bring this to the transportation reality. So why a transportation company or a truck driver has to adapt to different tools, platforms, specific documents, checklists, procedures, has to download uncountable apps, consuming data, storage. So every different company has a different way of doing things. Creating this field of collaboration is not easy, but I see no other way. Companies need to collaborate to pave the way for the digital transformation. And this is where technology platforms find their purpose. I always seen the role of logistics platform as drivers of democratization. So giving access to both the small carriers to a giant in the industry, the chance of providing tools to efficient, uh, so efficient for truck drivers to calculate their profitability, as well as for large companies to calculate their costs. The democratization of technology creates a positive loop. So in ESG times, there is nothing more social than sharing and promoting technology. So give access to those who need, understanding that this investment is due to the efficiency of the chain that you are part of, having respect for the driver waiting at your company's door, even if it's not part of your payroll, it is having social responsibility. And that's, I think, all the companies are seeking this. So imagine all the truckers in Brazil reverting 30% of their time, which today is destined to simply waiting in a better use of their access or even a quality time with their families. So this is the transformation that we need. This is the power that technology already offers us. So it's up to us to decide how to use it. Well, I guess this is what I had to say for today. And I want to thank you all for your time. Let me hear your talks about it. Find me on LinkedIn and just drop me a message. We can explore the subject a bit more. So see you there. Thank you again.